हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज़ नर्सिंग ट्रिक्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकन टू गेट द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम माई चैनल एंड इन दिस वीडियो यू विल लर्न द मेजर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी एंड इन बी एस सी यू कैन सी इन द फोर्थ ईयर वेन यू स्टडी द स्टैटिस्टिक्स the basic thing that we should know when we are learning and when we are seeing the statistics are the measures of central tendency in the previous video you can check uh, i have already started off with the introduction of the statistics and in this video we will just see the measures of central tendency and before starting this we should first know what exactly the central tendency is and then we will see the various measures of central tendency in which we will see the mean median and the mode so let's get started then first we will see what is the central tendency so the central tendency it is a feature uh, where you can see that maximum number of the students you can say they lie in the category or they lie in the category around which the maximum concentration is there so let us take an example so this we will understand with the help of example for example we have the we have some percentages like we have uh, 80% then we have other 85% then we have 95% and then you can say we have 97% so in one class suppose we have total 40 number of students so out of these 40 number of students maximum number of student or you can say around 75% of students they lie in the category or they lie somewhere around 85 so you can say the maximum concentration is around the 85 percentage so this is known as a central tendency so central tendency in a scientific term if i have to explain you it is the the it is the concentration of the value around the central value concentration of the values these are these dots denotes the value and they are concentrated around a central value and this particular definition explains the central tendency okay i hope the word central tendency is clear to you so let me just write the definition of central tendency so that you can just remember what exactly the central value is so the central value is it is the maximum or you can say it is a feature it is a feature of feature of concentration feature of concentration of the value around value around a central value value around a central value this is known as the central tendency now how we can calculate this central value so th there are various measures to find out the to find out this central value and this type of measures are known as the measures of the central tendency okay now let us just see the definition of the measures of central tendency so measures of of central tendency i am writing this in a short form ct stands for the central tendency you can write the central value the central value around around which the central value around which there is a there is a concentration a central value around which there is a concentration and let us take one more example for example if you have the if you are taking a height of the students of uh, you can say the height of an adult an average adult so we can take it as 160 161 162 163 164 and 165 so here i can say the maximum so the number of students in the 160 category are only 4 
number of student in 161 uh, height this is height in the centimeter okay so in 161 the students having the height of 161 are only two and with 162 the number of students are uh, suppose one and 163 you can say 10 and 164 you can say only one and 165 you can say the number of students having a height of 165 centimeter is only and only uh, two say okay so here you can say the maximum number of students are having a height of 163 centimeter so you can say the central value around which the values are concentrated means the maximum number of students are here around here in 163 so this how we can calculate this central value so there are some measures and these measures are known as, known as the measures of central tendency i hope this much is clear to you now let us just see what are those measures by which we can calculate this center value so the measures of central tendency are having various measures by which we can calculate the central value so the first one is the number one i can write down here is the mean and we have median and then median and we have the mode one by one we will see each of them the one two and three so various measures by which we can calculate the measures are mean median and the mode so now let us just see what is so before starting this why is it important to learn about the measures of central tendency so what are the what are the objectives why why we want to study this central tendency now for example if you have a central value of something it is very easy for you to understand okay that in this class or in this particular subject maximum number of the students are getting this particular marks so for that we can work more on to that subject okay because maximum number of students are not able to get the passing marks okay so that is why we are just studying the central value so the objectives are so that we can have a single value so that we can have a single value which is easy for us to compute or we can it is easy for us to facilitate the comparison so i hope the i hope this is clear to you that why is it important for us to understand the various uh, the central value it is just because we want to know the that single value around which the other values are they are concentrated so objectives are to know the single value and to facilitate the comparison now one by one we will see all the measures first of all we will come on to the mean so the my first measure is mean mean so mean is uh, it is a quantity or which is obtained by summing two or more numbers and then we can divide it by the total number of the of total number of whatever you are taking so it is the in a simple terms if i have to write first of all you should know mean is always denoted like this x and above that you have to write the bar so it is it is the sum of sum of values sum of values upon the number of values the number of values sum of values upon the number of values and the sum of values is sigma sigma is denoted for whenever you are summing or you are adding upon to the things sigma small x upon the n n is wherever in the statistics you see the n n denotes the total number of values for example let us take a very simple example for it like we have a series 1 3 5 and 7 okay so 7 and 3 10 10 plus 5 15 15 plus 1 and 16 so we have seen the formula is sum of the values so i have just summed 7 3 10 10 15 and 1 16 so 
this is the sum is total of this is 16 and how many this number of values how many values we have 1 2 3 4 so here you have to divide it by 4 so we get it as 4 we will cut it as 4 so the 4 is the mean of this particular series which is written in front of you so this way we calculate the mean so this is the simplest thing that we can i could have explained you the how you can calculate the mean now let us take one more example with the help of example you will be able to understand it more clearly the example says that you have the number of you have the 10 women's and their they have the hemoglobin of 12.5 then 13 then 10 then 11.5 11 14 9 7.5 then 10 and 12 okay so how many we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so we have let us just write out the denominator the number of values we have 10 now you have to sum up all these now once you will sum up all these you will get an answer of 110.5 so the answer will be 11.05 which is the mean hemoglobin of the sample which you have taken in your study so this way you will calculate the mean any doubt in calculating the mean please let me know in the comment box if you are not getting i will try to explain it in the my next video okay so this way you will calculate the mean now let us just calculate the mean if you have the discrete frequency table which is given to you so the discrete if the discrete frequency table is given to you then in case how you will calculate now for first of all let me just draw a table so that you can understand how you will calculate so this is the table in which the age age in years is given age in years is given which is denoted by x then number of students is given which is denoted by f and then here the box i have just left for calculating so we have age in years like 16 17 18 19 and the number of students having this particular age so 16 age we have total 35 number of students 31 number of students are having the age of 17 years then 20 number of students are having the age of 18 years then 14 number of students are having the age of 19 years now with the formula we know that sigma uh, sorry the mean is sigma x upon n so in the discrete so very important here to know that this is a discrete frequency table okay so this is a discrete frequency table in which you have not a single entity you have you have the number of students are also mentioned for that now for this how you will calculate the mean will be sigma x f upon the sigma f okay now what is sigma x f you have to simply multiply the x the age which is given and the total number of students so you will get the sigma xf here so this is not sigma xf this is just xf so here you will get 560 527 360 in this you will get the 266 now we want sigma xf now very easy to just add on all these things you will get 1713 upon you have to sum up 
the frequencies which is given and sigma f will be come out to be the 100 then answer will be 17.13 years is the mean of this particular discrete frequency table so this way if any discrete frequency table i just repeat discrete means when there you don't have any any class interval or anything you have a single number which is given and and you can see that for that single number the frequencies are given which is known as a discrete frequency table so in between this there is no continuity so 16 and directly we have jumped on to the 17 so in case if it is like 16 and 17 then 17 to 18 so we know there is a continuation in both the frequencies or in both the class intervals but here but here we don't have that continuation so that is why we are calling it as discrete frequency table let me just repeat it in case if the discrete frequency table is given to you you will first calculate the x into f then simply you will write down in the next box it is easy for you to then calculate it and then what you will do you will just do the sigma xf and that sigma xf once you will calculate then you will see that once you have calculated the sigma xf you will see the you will write it in a numerator and then after that you will write in the denominator as the sigma f which is your 100 and the answer is there in front of you so this way you will calculate the mean of a discrete frequency table okay so let me just adjust it for you i I'm, I'm sorry you are not able to see this okay so this way you will calculate the mean of discrete frequency table now let us learn how to calculate the mean of a mean of a continuous frequency table now let me just first of all make the continuous frequency table for you for that first of all you will write down the class interval the class intervals are like 15 into 20 20 25 25 30 with this example you will understand that why we have called it as a discrete frequency table okay then let me write the number of people number of people you can write as the f so 15 uh, in 15 in the class interval of 15 to 20 we have total number of 15 then we have 40 then we have uh, then we have 40 sorry then we have 60 so this way the table will be given to you and in this you have to put the formula of the continuous frequency table in order to find out the mean of this particular table so for that first of all in case of this continuous frequency table the mean can be calculated by the formula which is sigma xf upon sigma f now here you will see how will you divide this is x how will you multiply this into this we have total five numbers in between how can we divide how, how can we multiply this by this so for that we have to find out the x which is the midpoint which is the midpoint so this midpoint we will calculate here in our one next table that is the midpoint of 15 and 20 how will you find out the midpoint so midpoint you will find out the lower limit plus upper limit by 2 for example the lower limit of 15 and 20 is 15 upper limit is 20 divided by 2 so the answer will come out as the 17.5 this way you will calculate the calculate the midpoint of all the class intervals so here i am writing the midpoint 17.5 22.5 then 27.5 and 32.5 
so this is the midpoint of all the class intervals now after finding out the midpoint it is easy for us to just put it in the formula like xf if you multiply this by this you will get an answer of 262.5 450 1100 1950 and just simply do the sigma xf which you will get as 3762.5 and if you will put it in a formula of sigma xf upon sigma f that is 135 you will just divide it by 135 and you will get the answer of 27.87 so this way you can calculate the mean if the you have if you have the continuous frequency table with you so this way let me just revise so that you can understand how i have calculated the mean if you have a continuous frequency table with you so this way the continuous frequencies are given 15 20 20 25 25 30 30 and 35 and adjacent to it the number of people in the particular class interval is given 15 20 40 and 60 first of all we have to find out the x which is a midpoint so midpoint of 15 and 20 how are we we have, uh, we have calculated the midpoint is lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 which is 15 plus 20 divided by 2 which is 17.5 this way you will calculate the midpoint of all the class intervals once you get the midpoint you will just multiply the midpoint with the frequencies and this way you will get the answer and once you have calculated the midpoint and the multiplied with the frequency you will just sum up the xf so this is the numerator and the denominator will be just do the sigma f here you will get the sigma f and the answer is there in front of us which is sigma xf upon sigma f the formula for calculating the mean so this way you can calculate the mean of the continuous frequency table so i hope this is clear to you once you are done with the mean now let me just sum up here for you if you have to find out the mean mean is always denoted by x bar the formula for mean is the the sum sum of all the values upon number of number of values okay so in case if you have the discrete one discrete table with you decrease the discrete frequency table with you that will be how you will calculate x bar is equal to sigma xf upon sigma f okay very simple and in case if you have the continuous continuous frequency table in that case the formula is same but here x denotes as the midpoint and the midpoint we calculate as the lower limit plus lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 okay so you can just write down this now let us just move on to the next which is the so here only let me just tell you what are the what are the merits of mean why we are calculating the mean of something the merits of mean are first of all very simple is method to calculate the average then it is not affected by the value of each item in the series so it is not affected by the values there in the your series and then it is reliable method it is a very reliable method you can rely on it and it is not based on the position so how you don't have to first arrange it in ascending order or in a descending order no so it's not dependent on the position 
so not dependent on the position so this is the these are the merits of the mean and when once you have the merits of something definitely we have the demerits also of that thing the demerits are very small and very large items they are usually uh, they if the if you have one value of 1 and the other value of 1 lakh so definitely your answer will be affected okay so if you have one very small number and one very large number your value will be affected secondly uh, it is not always good measure is it is not always a good measure of a central tendency always you can't say that it is a good measure of a central tendency so till here we have seen about the mean now let us just see about the median okay now next is we have the median so for median now what is median now now median it is the middle most value when the data is in a ascending order simple terms it is a middle value when your data when your data middle value when your data is arranged in a ascending order that is known as the median so median of a set of values is the middle most value when the data is arranged in ascending order of the magnitude now in this also we will see how we will calculate the median of a discrete and a median of a continuous median of a discrete and median of a continuous median of discrete and the median of the continuous frequency table frequency table so here let me just stop this video here only because otherwise it will be a very lengthy video for you in the next video you will see the median how we have calculated the you will see how we will calculate the discrete frequency tables median and the continuous frequency table median so just hit the bell icon so that you will get the notification of my next video in which we will see about this median so in this video just go through how we will cal how we can calculate the mean and please practice some questions from the from various uh, books so that you will be you will be very you can calculate the mean from if any type of question comes to your comes to your exam okay so thank you so much for watching this video any doubt just you can comment in the comment box and i will answer to your queries thank you thank you so much